Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds. Welcome to APE's video notes for topic 7.3, which will cover thermal inversions. Our objective today is to be able to describe thermal inversions and how they relate to pollution. And the skill that we'll practice at the end of today's video will be explaining an environmental process or concept that is represented visually. Before we get into a thermal inversion, we have to understand the urban heat island effect because it helps explain how we actually form a thermal inversion. So the urban heat island effect refers to this idea that urban areas are often warmer than surrounding rural or suburban areas. And that's due to a couple factors. And so the first factor is going to be their lower albedo. So remember that albedo refers to how reflective a surface is. And because blacktop and asphalt are really prevalent in cities, and there's less vegetation, they're going to be darker in color, and so they're going to absorb more of the sun's rays. Now, remember that when a surface absorbs more sunlight and reflects less, it's going to radiate some of that absorbed energy out as infrared radiation. Now, infrared radiation is perceived by humans as heat, and so this is why the sun's rays striking a surface make it warmer. So let's take a look here at a graphic to help us out. So we have our sun back from uh, video 7.2, uh, he's really getting you know prominently featured in our air pollution unit here and so we have sun rays coming out and they're going to strike both the downtown area and a rural area that has a lot more trees now we have red squiggly lines here to represent all of the infrared radiation that's given off by this blacktop and by this asphalt in the urban area of the downtown here in our diagram when it is absorbing the sun rays now rural areas you know still are heated by the sun of course but it's just gonna be less pronounced. And that's because vegetation reflects more sunlight compared to these downtown areas. It's, it's a little lighter in color. And so here's a graphic again to help you remember that because of albedo being lower in the downtown or the urban area, we're gonna have a higher surface temperature. Another reason for the urban heat island effect is evapotranspiration. So try to think all the way back to unit one and water cycle where we learned that evapotranspiration is the combination of evaporation of water from you know, surfaces on land, and then also the transpiration, which is water leaving you know, the pores of leaves. And so it's that combined effect where water is leaving the surface of an area, and that's gonna provide a cooling effect. So we can represent that here with these large blue squiggly arrows coming out of our rural area. All of these trees are transpiring. And so that's actually taking a lot of the heat in that area and dispersing it out into the atmosphere, carrying it away from the surface. So that's gonna cool the area. Now in the downtown urban area, we have fewer trees. And so we have less transpiration. We're also probably going to have less evaporation because we have so much runoff. And so we're not going to be experiencing that evaporative and transpirational cooling that's more prominent when you have more vegetation, such as our rural area here. Now we'll take a look at how a thermal inversion or a temperature inversion forms. And so first we have to understand the normal temperature gradient for atmospheric temperature near Earth. And so normally Earth is going to be heating the atmosphere the most, you know, closest to its surface. And so we should expect to find the warmest air near Earth's surface, and we should expect air to get cooler as we rise in altitude. And so this is for a couple of reasons. One, Earth's surface is absorbing that sunlight and then it's releasing as infrared radiation. And then also we have lower pressures at higher altitudes. Remember that lower pressure is gonna result in lower temperature. And so a couple of reasons for this normal temperature gradient that we see here. What we have to understand though, is that this is going to help disperse air pollutants. And so because warm air rises, we have pollutants that form near Earth. These could be things like tropospheric ozone or things like smog or particulate matter. And because that warm air rises, we get convection currents and those are gonna be moving up. So think all the way back to the Hadley cell, topic 4.5, you know, we had warm air rising at the equator. And so this is beneficial from a pollution standpoint because it helps carry those air pollutants up and away from our urban areas. So let's take a look now at what happens with a thermal inversion. So in a thermal inversion, we're going to invert or change or alter this temperature gradient. And so this can happen for a couple of reasons. One, we could have a warm front that just moves in. Uh, this is especially prominent in coastal areas, you know, like California, there's oftentimes a warm air mass moving in from the ocean and that's going to cover up a colder air mass below. However, we can also have this at night in the summertime in 
dense urban areas where they're basically absorbing sunlight all day, storing that energy, and then releasing it at night. And the surface of Earth cools off when the sun you know, goes down, but that heat's still being released. And so what happens is we get this warm air mass that's trapped beneath a colder air mass above, and then it's keeping this cooler air near Earth's surface. And what that does is it shuts off convection. So here we have, instead of our air pollutants rising away from the urban areas they were in our normal temperature gradient, we have air pollutants being trapped close to Earth. And again, this is because we basically have this warm air mass kind of sandwiched between a colder air mass above and a cooler air mass below, and it's not really allowing for normal convection to carry these air pollutants away. One thing we should notice in this diagram or this picture here, and it's not explicitly in the notes on the screen, is that this becomes more pronounced in you know, geographical basins. So when we have mountains on either side, this becomes especially you know, worsened because there's not going to be as much wind to disperse the smog or the particulate matter that may be collecting, and it's going to be harder for that warm air mass to move out of the way as well. And so basically we have these conditions just exacerbated or worsened when there are geological factors that play like a mountain range. And then finally, we'll wrap up by talking about effects of thermal inversions in a little more depth. And we'll start out here with a picture from LA that I think is just a really kind of shocking image to help you really grasp how extreme these thermal inversions can be. And so one of the major problems here is that all of these air pollutants, and so this could be anything we've discussed in Unit 7 so far, they're going to be trapped closer to Earth. Uh, and by this time, hopefully you see where this is going, which is that these are all going to make respiratory irritation in humans worse. So we could have asthma flare-ups. And in fact, there's some studies that have linked increased emergency room visits due to asthma in the days that immediately follow a thermal inversion event. And so this is you know, scientifically supported by data that we have you know, increased hospitalizations due to asthma. It could be also you know, chronic uh, obstructive pulmonary disorder, so COPD or emphysema being worsened. So all of these respiratory diseases can put people in the hospital uh, you know, normally, and then that gets even more pronounced when we have a thermal inversion. So it's going to have economic costs. It, it, it taxes our healthcare system. You know, it costs people time at work. They may lose income. You know, jobs may lose productivity. So there's a lot of economic problems that come along with a thermal inversion event. We also have potential for decreased revenue. So if you're a tourist and you were planning to visit LA, you know, it's feasible that you might look ahead at the weather and you might look at pictures like this and you might be less likely to go. And so it can cost, you know, countries or specific cities, you know, revenue from tourism. And then finally, we are going to experience decreased photosynthetic activity. So plants are also going to suffer because of this. It's harder for sunlight to penetrate this thick blanket of smog that's trapped due to this thermal inversion. And so again, we have reduced photosynthetic activity. So for practice FRQ 7.3 today, I want you to take a look at this diagram where we have normal conditions on the left and a temperature or thermal inversion on the right. I want you to explain what these arrows indicate about how temperature inversions impact air pollutants such as smog.